In this tutorial, we are going to cover all the different ways you can wire components together in the software. Uh, QSys offers a variety of ways you can do this, and knowing how each one of them works will really keep your design clean and efficient. So let's start off by adding an I.O. frame. Go to your inventory, hit the plus icon, peripherals, I.O. frame. And let's uh, add some cards to it. So we'll go over to its properties panel. Let's say it's got a mic line card and a data port card. All right, we're gonna drag the components for both of those cards into our schematic. Now let's take a look at these two components. Now normally, uh, there would be a whole lot of digital processing that goes on in between these two. Audio comes into our system through the mic line in, it goes through DSP, and then it goes out into our system like to a loudspeaker or an amplifier through the data port. But for the sake of this tutorial, we're just gonna connect them directly. The mic line component has four output pins, and the data port card has four input pins. Now you'll notice that its output pins over here are a different shape. They're a little right-facing triangle rather than a circle. That's because these outputs aren't an audio line, this is a data line. And QSYS won't let you wire two components together that don't match. So, the first way that we could wire these outputs to these inputs is by traditional wiring, where you simply grab a pin, drag it over to the next pin, and voila, you've got a nice curved line that connects them. Uh, you can do this one at a time, or you can do multiple at a time. You could grab all of these output pins and drag them all over to the input pins, and they will automatically wire themselves to the appropriate inputs. Now, if you don't like this curved wire look, you can click anywhere on the wire and create a breakpoint. You can drag it somewhere else and adjust the line however you want. You can make as many breakpoints as you want. You can even click on a breakpoint and then delete that breakpoint if you didn't like it, and you just keep on adjusting it until you've got the wire that you like. But that looks a little crazy, so let's just make that a nice curve. Now, sometimes if you have a big complicated design, you may not want to see wires running all over the place. So you can use a second way to wire components together that's called signal names. So I'm going to delete these wires. What you want to do for signal names is you can click on any pin, hit the space bar, and type in the name that you'd like for your signal name. I'm gonna use mic channel one and hit enter. And then you can go to the pin you're going to connect it to. Once again, you hit spacebar and you type it in. Now you'll notice that before I even finish typing it in, it's going to present to me all the available signal names that I can choose from. Now you may have also noticed that until the connection is complete, the signal name label has a jagged end to it, indicating that it is unterminated. Not only that, down here by our design inspector, we have a warning icon telling us that we have incomplete signal paths. Now, once we finish that signal name, then you'll notice they curve off and our design inspector is happy again. Now, just like traditional wiring, you can create multiple signal names at a time. So let's delete these ones. And we're going to select all four of our input pins and hit the space bar and type in a label. And when we hit enter, it will automatically assign them numbers in increasing value. Now, one thing you may have noticed there is I selected those pins by moving from left to right with my selection box. If I was moving from right to left, then my component is also being touched by that green box. So if I were hit the space bar now and rename it, oops, I'm renaming the entire uh, component. So you don't want to do that. So let's undo that. So now to copy over these signal names, you want to select them all, hit Control C to copy them. You're going to select the pins you want to connect them to and hit Control V. And now we've got nice terminated signal names. All right, why don't we put a pause right here and you can go on to the next part whenever you're ready.